Hi right, guys, so in this video, we're going to find the delta given an epsilon. Um, I suggest you look, uh, watch the previous video that I made about the same thing. It gives a more detail into how to find this type of problems. But for this one, it's a different function, so it's going to be a different example. Okay, So the function here is x squared. And the limit that I'm looking for is when x approaches 2. And then it says... Find that delta such that that limit is equal to 4, okay? So just like the previous video, the first thing we do is find the values of the definition. So in this case, C, F of X, and L, okay? So by association, C is equal to the number that's to the right, right? So it's 2 in this case. So C is equal to 2. Now, F of X is my function. So in this case, f of x is equal to x squared. And then L is the value of the limit, in this case, is 4. Okay? And once you have that, you can plug it in inside the definition, and it's going to look something like this. Okay? Substitute c for 2, L for 4, f of x for x squared. And very similar to the previous video, we're going to start with the conclusion. So in this case, will be this part. So the absolute value of x squared minus 4. Okay? Now, by now, you should notice that x squared minus 4 can be broken up, right? It's a difference of squares, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So this is x minus 2. Sorry, there's some lag issues. Um, and x plus 2. Okay? Now, by properties of absolute value, we can separate these two products into two different absolute values. So this is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2. Okay? And notice immediately that the absolute value of x minus 2 is the hypothesis. And you always want to look for the hypothesis in the conclusion. That's how you're going to separate and come up with an inequality that's going to satisfy the condition. So x minus 2, I want that there. But I don't want x plus 2 there. Okay, I want to find an upper bound. So we're going to use the same technique. We're going to use the minimum technique. And we're going to set delta equal to 1. So if delta is equal to 1, then we have that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 1. Okay? And if you saw, if you seen the first video, how I explained all the properties of absolute value, you know that this can be separated into two inequalities. So this is if and only if, negative 1 is less than x minus 2 is less than 1. Now, I want to isolate for x because I want to find the term that's going to give me an upper bound for absolute value of x plus 2. So I'm going to have to add 2, right? So minus 1 plus 2 less than x minus 2 plus 2 less than 1 plus 2. Okay? Now, once I do that, I have negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. So 1 less than negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That's why we added 2 in the first place. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. But now I want this expression. I want x plus 2. So now I have to add 2 again to get x plus 2. So I'm going to do that. So 1 plus 2 x plus 2, then 3 plus 2. So now 1 plus 2 is 3. x plus 2 is x plus 2, which is what we want. And then 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, but remember, we want to go back to absolute value. We're looking for the upper bound of the absolute value of x plus 2, not just x plus 2. So I have to rewrite this inequality 
in, an, in a way that I can use it as an absolute value. So just like a reverse method from, from the, the beginning, um, we need to have a minus five, right? Because we have greater than five, but to convert it into absolute value, we need a minus five. Now, it, because three is greater than minus five, so we can write that as the following. So minus five is less than three, which is less than x plus two, which is less than five. So because this is true, I can uh, get rid of negative three and just have it as negative five less than x plus two less than five. And by doing that, I now can use the definition of absolute value and make it an absolute value. So I have the absolute value of x plus two is less than five. So five is my upper bound, okay? That's the number I'm gonna use. So we go back here and this is less than x minus, absolute value of x minus two times five, okay? But notice that we want this thing be less than an epsilon, right? So let's assume it is. Therefore, x, absolute value of x minus two is less than epsilon over five, okay? So remember in the previous video again that now I have to do something to be able to make sure that it always lands on the exact epsilon that, are, that is gonna be favorable for the delta. So how do we do this? Well, this, this is where the minimum technique comes in. We choose delta to be equal to the minimum value of what? Well, of epsilon over five, and one, okay? And the reason we use this is because both of them are gonna work, okay? If it's one, it's gonna be true because then you, it'll just divide it by five. And then if, epsilon, if the number is smaller than one, then it's also gonna be true because you're gonna be using epsilon over five, okay? So in both cases, it's gonna satisfy the inequality and you're gonna have the condition, okay? And that's all we need. We just found a delta that's gonna satisfy the condition for every epsilon that I choose, okay? So if you enjoyed this video, please like the, the video, subscribe to Motivao, share it with your parents or friends or family member, whoever you want, and you can comment below if there is something that confuses you. Thank you very much, have a great day.